Hello guys, I am Paul McWhorter with TopTechBoy.com and I am here today with lesson number one on using the BeagleBone Black Rev C. If you've been with us through the earlier lessons, you know that we have gone through a series on using the Arduino. Then we went through a series on using the Arduino with Python. And then most recently, we went through a series of about 40 lessons on how to use the Raspberry Pi. Okay, what we are going to do today is we are going to transition away from the Raspberry Pi and we are going to be looking at the new Beagle Bone Black. Did you like that special effect where I sort of took out the Raspberry Pi and brought in the Beagle Bone? I thought, thought you might like that. Okay, so first question is, is that for all the things the Raspberry Pi does, why would we want to move to the Beagle Bone Black? There is one limitation on the Raspberry Pi that we just cannot get around, and that is that there's no capability of doing analog inputs. You can do digital writes, you can simulate analog writes with PWM, and you can do digital reads, but there is no way to do analog reads. Now, if you really wanted to, you could go buy an analog to digital converter chip, and then you could put it, uh, you could connect through that chip into the Raspberry Pi through like I2C or SPIE or something like that. But really, I don't want to fool with that. So that brings me to the Beagle, that brings me to, it's over here, the Beagle Bone Black, which I have running live here. The advantage of the Beagle Bone, Beagle Bone Black is that it has analog inputs. And so I can do digital writes, I can do analog writes through PWM, I can do digital reads, and I can do analog reads. And so with that, you can, it's sort of like the best of both worlds. You have all of the things that you can do on the on the on the Arduino, but you have something that has pretty much the power of a of a full blown, blown uh, desktop machine. So it's kind of like the best of both worlds. But there's never any perfect solution. And the downside of the Beagle is there's a very small user base. There are not many tutorials out there. It's very hard to break into and kind of get your mind around how to actually go in and use it because there's just not very many examples. And there's almost no software out there and almost no libraries. Now, don't write me angry letters. I mean, if you like the, the if you're a user, then great. You know, let's continue to try to build the user uh, community. But what I'm going to do here is I'm going to build a series of lessons that will take you through show you how to use the Beagle Bone Black and show you how you can you know basically do those functions that you need to be able to do how to do digital writes, how to do analog writes, how to do digital reads, how to do analog reads, how to communicate over the serial port, all the things we have done on the earlier lessons. <clears throat> how does this come? comes in a little box. I've got some links here on this le lesson. Go to toptechboy.com and I've got some links where you can get the gear comes in a nice little box. I mean, there's not too much excitement to unbox this. You basically get the Beagle Bone Black and a cord. And that is what you need to get started. And we'll show you next in the next lesson about how to boot this thing up and how to get it, uh, get it connected. The nice thing is it actually comes, unlike the Raspberry Pi, it comes with a Linux operating system installed. The other thing I like about it is it has an onboard memory where the, uh, where the uh, operating system is stored. You can use an external SD card, but I kind of like it having the uh, operating system <coughs> on board. And and it's uh, easy to flash that if you want to update, uh, update the board or put something uh, put something new on it. So that's kind of that's kind of cool. What we're going to talk about now in lesson one, I've kind of given a little bit of an introduction. Is before we do anything else, you need to order your Beagle Bone Black. You can uh, do that from a link on my website or from your favorite supplier. You can come to toptechboy.com, come to Beagle Bone Black, and you see the website has a news section on these lessons and right now we have one but you can come here and you can uh, order it so that you get your gear in place and you can follow along as I start building these lessons. I'm going pretty fast right now I'm out of school and I have the summer and so I should be able to put together a nice uh, a nice series of lessons on this pretty quick so you can go ahead and order your gear now. Alright what are we going to do in lesson number one? The first thing that we've really got to talk about is we have to understand these pins. Okay, you see all the pins here. We have a, 
the uh, pin header on the left and we have a pin header on the right. On the left we have, I wish it would not do that, okay, on the left we have got 46 pins and two columns and four, uh, two columns and uh, 45 rows. On the right we have two columns and 45 rows, so we've got a total of 92 different pins. Okay, 92 different pins. And I've kind of tried to draw a picture here that will show you what the various pins can be used for. Let's see if I click on this, if I can get a closer picture and still see everything. I think that we can get, uh, yeah, I think that you can see that whole thing. It's all on the screen. So let's talk about what these pins are. The red pins are, are voltage supplies and grounds and so what we can get out of this is we can get 5 volts out, we can get 3.3 .3 volts out, you can see we've got two grounds here. This is equivalent to the power button, the reset button. Over here uh, pins 1 and 2 on the right are grounds and then we have uh, four grounds down here in the lower left. Make sure right and left, make sure that you've got your 5 volt plug in the upper left for your left to be the same as my left and your right to be the same as my right. Okay, then we've got digital pins. These are what you might think about like our general purpose uh, input output put pins, our GPIO pins, and I have shaded in green all the pins that can be used as GPIO pins. Notice some of these pins also can be used for serial communication, UART, uh, TX and RX here, and a different TX and RX here. What I usually like to try to do when I'm hooking things up, I try to go with just the straight GPIO pins, and then I try to save these in case I want to later on add serial communication. I try to not use these uh, for general purpose pins if they have a different function. I try to hold them in reserve. Okay. Now, if you want to do analog out, if you want to simulate analog out with PWM. Our PWM pins are here 14, 16, 21, 22, 13, and 19. <coughs> so we've got a nice set of six pins that can be used for TW, uh, PWM. Now we get to the good stuff. What was missing on the Raspberry Pi was analog in. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven analog in pins just what we had been looking for and those are uh, indicated in blue. Very important on the analog end, those pins read 0 to 1.8 volts so don't try to read 3.3 volts, don't try to read 5 volts, you can read between 0 and 1.8 volts. The good thing is, the really nice thing is, is that they have provided this pin 32 which will give you a 1.8 volt reference output. So if you're doing something like a resistor divider, like a potentiometer, or trying to read a flex sensor or anything that you would read as a voltage divider, you can put as the top leg this 1.8 coming out here and then everything would be scaled between the 0 and the 1.8. So it's nice having a 1.8 reference. This is the voltage you should use when you are using these analog input pins. Power it from the VDD underscore ADC, which is pin 32, and that way you have a nice uh, you have a nice reference uh, voltage of 1.8 volts and a reference ground here. Okay, uh, let's see. So we have uh, oh I think I guess I think we have seven PWM pins in case I counted wrong. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. It looks like seven uh, uh, pins that can be used as uh, as uh, PWM. Okay, there's a shared I2C bus that can be used over here on pins 19 and 20. <clears throat> and then these orange ones we call reconfigurable digital pins. Those are primarily being used for displays, like if you want to put an LCD display on, then uh, uh, the displays use these pins, and so I tend to just not mess with those, hold them back in case we want to put an LCD display on, on at some point. Okay, so that's how the pins are going to use. The way that you reference these pins is usually, uh, and we'll get into this in the future lessons, but it's usually which header you're on and then underscore which pin. And so like this pin would be in quotes, if I want to give it a name, I would say, uh, let's say I was going to hook an LED to it, I would say LED is equal to in quotes 
uppercase P9, and then if, if this is where we were, underscore 18. So uppercase P9, underscore 18, would reference this pin, or uh, over here we would go uh, uppercase P8, underscore 26, would refer to this pin. In the, in the environment that we're going to be working in, which is going to be Python. And so I'm going to be doing these lessons in Python because we've already learned a lot about Python in our earlier lessons. And as I look, there's a lot of different ways you can program this Beagle Bone, and there's a lot of different ways you can interact with it. But after looking through it, the way that I think that we can get all the functionality we want is to uh, work with Python. What we're going to be doing is we're going to be connecting to the Beagle Bone through a terminal connection, and then we will be working through the terminal. One of the nice things about the Raspberry Pi is the Raspberry Pi had four, the Raspberry Pi Model 2 had four USB connections and it had an Ethernet, and it had all this other thing, so a lot of good input-output. The poor little BeagleBone, he only has one USB, and so if you were going to try to directly connect to him, you're going to have to probably get a, UP, a, 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 a USB port expander so that you could get a keyboard and a mouse hook to it, and then it's a little bit of a goofy pin, a micro... Uh, uh, HDMI pin to get the video signal out. So I found the easiest thing is to just hook this to the Ethernet and uh, power it up over the USB and then just connect to it with a with a terminal window. And that's the way we'll be doing these lessons. I'll take you through it step by step. Okay guys, go ahead and get your gear ordered and let's come back for lesson number two and learn how to use the BeagleBone Black. Paul McCorder, TopTechBoy.com. We will talk to you guys later.